it off on the website championship starting this weekend so get yourself organized on orgradio.com and tonight i'm joined by former down footballer kevin mccarran and ga sports tracker app owner Kevin Kennedy to talk about last weekend's Allianz National Football League finals and of course the start of the championship this weekend so really looking forward to chatting to the lads tonight uh, we were meant to have Joe Sheridan but Joe texted me half an hour ago saying that he's after finding out that his lovely partner is is um, expected so I think that's the best excuse that he can <laughs> I'll hear all year lads so try Trump that Mr McCarran how are you? All good sir yep yeah good weekend's football at it, it, uh Sort of whets the appetite for for what's coming down the line in, in championship next week when when you think league's just over and I, I see now the merit and people talking about the condensed uh, the sort of split season and how condensed it is I think it's I think it's brilliant in one sense but but very hard for teams to manage and we could see that at the weekend and, and different teams approach to the finals you know mm, absolutely did you did you have a good weekend or you were telling us on Saturday that you made the trip up to Croke Park. Yeah, no, it was good. Um, again, any time that, that your county is down in Crow Park, it's for a good reason. So um, it was nice to see down uh, competing again in a final, but unfortunately fell short. But um, I think what, what unfolded on Sunday um, shows every county where you need to get to and, and how to get there with, with Derry's um, sort of completion of a of a rise from Division 4 to Division 1. It's, it's actually, I think there's there's a lot to be, lot to be said for seeing a... A vision and, and obviously you know talent always there but when there's a vision and there's a want to go and do something and um, you can see them getting very close to where they want to be which is which is Sam Maguire and um, come the end of the summer so it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. Hmm. Yeah absolutely we'll touch on to that remarkable game of football yesterday now in a second or two Mr Kennedy how are you? Dead on John, dead on good to be back on good to see Kevin again Um, yeah as Kevin's touched on there a great weekend of football Really wet the appetite for championship starting this weekend. Um, I was putting up an Instagram earlier on. Someone says, you know, it's a pity it has to be six weeks until the good teams meet again. But Ulster Championship, both sides this year are going to be very, very tasty and very interesting to see. So we have a lot of good games to watch in between that. Mm, absolutely. Did you have a good weekend? Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was great. Um, didn't get up to an awful lot watching matches and all that jazz as well. But good to see a bit of sun after three and a half years of rain. Um and of course, it lasted all of 48 hours and we're back to where we are now. But sure, it was good. Our summer was good while it lasted. <laughs> oh, I know. It's not great. It is not great. But look at uh, hopefully Simon Harris and some of the boys can sort out the, the climate here in Ireland for taking over for Radker. Uh, lads, we will crack into the action. Good to see you in good form. And it's great to have you on board tonight. So we'll crack into. The Allianz National Football League final action took place over the weekend. So it was lowly one real place to start this uh, tonight, lads. It's the Allianz National Football League Division 1 final yesterday that took place in Croke Park. It was Dublin and Derry. It was Dublin 221, uh, Derry 318. And of course, that was after extra time. And then, of course, Derry won the game 3 1 on penalties. An absolutely incredible game in Croke Park. Um, I suppose obviously we really are coming up into the championship end of things now. So just so many talking points coming into this one. The sending offs, the last minute goal to get it to extra time. Just where do you start with this, Mr. McCarran? And uh, you, you made leaders into the war here. I just I think it's exactly what what football and people wanted. Um, you know, we, we can hear cries from from the hurling uh, sort of fraternity about you know the quality of their game and and you know. I think at the weekend, um, everybody got to witness what, what's great about our game, and, and I think a nearly a hurling scoreline suggests there wasn't too much defending happening, but there was a lot of good defending, but there was some outstanding pieces of um, attack and play, and, and, and particularly around, you know, the fact that teams defended numbers, but how well can you break? How well can you kick past the ball? And I think there was a, just a great balance um, between how teams ran at each other how teams exploited turnovers with kick passes and I you know I'm looking forward to watching it back again with a with a sort of coaching eye on it as well and, and trying to learn as much as you can from seeing teams play that way because um you know myself when I'm coaching now at the minute you always just try to encourage lads to kick past the ball because when our game is played um best I feel it's it's when the majority of kick passes are executed and executed um you know, with with the hope that you're going to hurt the team, and you know you can kick past the ball and set up traps for yourself by by kicking at the wrong time. But 
when the opportunity was there to kick at the weekend, particularly off kickouts and and turnovers, and um, teams were were exploited. And it's probably something I would love to sort of pick the brain of Kevin as well in terms of, um, you know, there must be some sort of stat or way that you can sort of determine, you know, the ability to kick past the ball and and the more it's done in a certain part of the pitch. You just see, you just see the the free flowing football that came with with Derry and and Dublin the other day. Um, yes, there was moments of of slow attack, but when the fast kick pass happened, the transition was was great to watch. Mm, well, what I suppose what would be your thoughts on that, Mister Kennedy? I suppose what, what Kevin's after saying. I suppose. Yeah, it comes down to um, when you track it on the app, and it comes down to the phases, the the average duration of a phase of play, and you'll find that teams who do really well at kicking the ball, like the Derry Young yesterday, um, like the Kerry have built into their game throughout the year, their phases of play for um, points are a lot quicker, so it's roughly about fifty seconds, um, that they're getting between a kick off going their way, right up the pitch that they get a score in, whereas anything over that sort of one minute. One minute, ten seconds. The longer it goes on, then the the more chance it ends up in a way. And simply because the opposite opposition have now got a chance to get back and get set up, and you have to try and work your way through and pick off a score. Whereby teams now you see them where they turn and they run back. If you can beat that with a kick, you're getting in behind their line of defence. And actually, for Downs or for Westmeath's second goal against Down, although the initial score, the pass that resulted in their second goal wasn't a kick, just 30 seconds before that, there was a kick pass from midfield that allowed that defensive line to push even further back. So not only does um, kicking the ball give you a better opportunity to score, but it brings that defensive line further back beyond the D that brings you in a, more sh- uh, a better shooting zone. Very good, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I suppose, uh, Mr. Karen. Obviously, this this game yesterday really did have it all. And I know a lot of the, the chat and debate going into this game with the league finals, and you know, having the league finals, and a lot of people were kind of saying that's probably why we have the league finals. And obviously, we've seen the likes of Leitrim and mean, Leitch getting up to Croke Park yesterday, and sorry, on Saturday, and obviously the, the exciting thriller that we had on Sunday. I suppose that's probably why we do the league finals, and you've seen the raw intensity and the hits and the action, and it really was a fantastic advertisement for football yesterday, yesterday Kevin. Yeah, like when you when you look at you know probably the evolution of Gaelic football in the past, like you know from from two thousand and ten probably onwards, particularly when, when Donegal had their breakthrough year, um, you know how well you defend keeps you in games, but when you really want to go and win games, you have to open up, open up and play, and I think that the dairy model at the minute they have a really good balance between making sure they're not exposed with massive space as they defend, but equally so, how can they expose teams with, with uh, their attacking transition? So, listen, I just think it shows Gaelic football in, in its best light and, you know, the way Derry sort of, you know, picked Dublin apart at times and, you know, at the end of the game, at the end of the day, the game was a draw. <laughs> you know, they, they didn't win the match, they won the penalty shootout and, you know, it's just going to be a fascinating summer to see, you know, how Derry you know, pick their way through Ulster, but equally so, how can Dublin keep evolving and, and now looking at probably two or three teams that are realistically going to push them, you know, between Mayo maybe getting their gander up in, in Connacht and uh, you're looking at, at Kerry and Derry being, I think, a, a top four um, top four pick there between them. So, listen, it's, it's fascinating and I just loved watching um, Sunday as a spectacle for, for, for football. Um, it, it just shows that, you know, the, the game can be played really well defensively, but it can be appreciated for attacking again. And, and I think now that the the bravery, I don't know how you watch football now yourselves as well, like, but when you see teams being really brave, going man to man, high up the pitch, Derry did that a lot on, on Dublin's kickouts and they got a lot of reward from that. And, and equally so Dublin, you know, trying to nullify what Lynch was doing. And I think that was something actually fascinating on Sunday, watching some of Lynch's kick passes when he came onto the play. His kick passes, um, probably what you said, Kevin, his kick passes allowed Dublin's defensive line to be deeper and and it allowed pockets for Murray and and McGuigan and that to come into. So, listen, great, great game of football. And and it just shows now uh, what lies ahead maybe in the summer with with, um, sort of the top... Definitely at least the top four, but you know, with the top six or eight teams going at it later in the summer, it, it, it should be fascinating stuff. 
Mm, yeah, fingers crossed for someday. From just both teams, uh, Mr. McCarron, obviously, but with some stars through the performances. So sort of the dairy end of things, obviously, Connor Glass again. He was just phenomenal, and the way he even hit the penalty. He's 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 something else, <laughs> Mr. McCarron, and really. But from the dairy end of things, you could really name a no- number of players that stood out yesterday. Yeah, no, I thought. Um... You know, just the way they've, they've used Brenton Rogers now, you know, his battle with Fenton was class. Like, I just loved how they, you know, pinned each other back um, on the attacking front, but also the, the, some of their contests for the ball. Um, you know, just just a huge part of, of the game now is possession and, you know, Bran Hard as well um, for, for Dublin. But when you look at that Derry team, um, you know, McAvoy now being used at, at six, that's probably come as a, as a result of McKinless carrying a knock so you know by having an injury that's just created a real good headache that you know McAvoy can now be sort of utilised as a as a man marker um, at, at six maybe and McKinless can be used somewhere else so um, you know you just uh, the dairy team from from the start of the league you know we spoke about it early uh, earlier in the year how they were sort of nearly fine-tuning their team around and um, getting their strongest 11 or 12 players on the pitch as often as possible and you know, we see Kieran McFall again yesterday covering serious ground and and just his level of, of control on the ball. I, I watched Glenn this year, um, albeit in the fog in Uri, but he um, McFall really has added something different to to Derry since you know Kieran Mina and, and Rory Gallagher probably didn't get the the use of him they they wanted to over over their spell. But listen, it's it's going to be a huge um, step up now in the Ulster Championship again and and. You know the likes of Murray and um, Murray inside and Lachlan, um, and and obviously you know just looking at at Shane McGuigan just getting better and better and and becoming the the out and out sort of inside forward that you need to win all Ireland's and I think they're they're finally they're finally tuning everything and I think they're away for a week's training now again so you know it's just their professionalism and and the buy-in to to go and win in all Ireland it's clearly there and you know all the all the sort of language that come out of the the post-match interviews with, with Brenton Rogers and Mickey Hart was, you know, it's a stepping stone to where they want to go and, and you can see that in them. Yeah, and I suppose Kevin Kennedy, obviously, the, like I was saying to Kevin, McCarron and there a couple of sets ago that obviously the bite and hunger we had for a league game. I suppose, was there such intensity and bite and hunger because realistically these two teams really could be meeting down the line and, you know, that bit of competitive edge was really coming true in Croke Park yesterday. Yeah, it, it was fantastic. Uh, you you could tell the intensity from from the minute the ball was through up until actually right at the end. And what was really interesting is to see, despite the handbags and everything went on, um, resulted in Paddy Small's red card. As soon as that last penalty was kicked, Kieran McFall was you just see him on screen. He turned and went straight over the Dublin lads, and Connor Glass followed suit, and they were shaking hands before they even celebrated. They went and shook hands, and because they know it's not a long summer, but Championship is around the corner, and them two teams will meet again. Um, and it's great to have. Maybe it's maybe it's maybe it's Mickey Hart versus Dublin as opposed to Tyrone versus Dublin. It seems to be. Um, I heard was it? I think it was maybe Kieran. We don't know. It was actually Flynn last week was saying around about Tyrone and Tyrone having this bit of dog in this. Remember Tyrone used to go down to play, um, Dublin, and you had McManaman and stuff. And had that wee bit of dog in this and bait about them. That was certainly there about about there yesterday. And um, whenever the, the nonsense did kick off, who was the first in the back up? McCluskey, Connor Gloss. Who else would you expect? He went in, he grabbed two men, but and he just he went for it, you know. And he he, he led down the line. He said, "We're not getting bullied here. We're not getting pushed about." Um, and it just shows you there's a new rivalry in town, and it's a three way triangle between Kerry, Dublin, and Derry because Derry have a conveyor belt of talent coming through. Last year, as Kevin's touched on there, you know, they, they had their 11, 12 core and then bits added in to make it up to 15. And beyond that, you couldn't really see much in, in depth there now. But you know how Gareth McKinnis didn't start yesterday? Emma Bradley didn't play, or so came on, but he didn't start yesterday. They have an abundance of depth, maybe about another four or five players on that team this year that weren't there last year. For, or weren't at that level last year. McAvoy stepped up. As Kevin said, I looked at it yesterday, man. Jesus, why would they not? Why would they just not drop Kieran McFall back? Because Kieran McFall is one of the best half centre half backs in Ireland. You know, whenever he played for Glenmore, he played for Derry in the, in the, the before he went away to America. He was fantastic. He was scoring every championship game that was coming up. So I thought the natural thing would have been to drop him back. But then McAvoy steps up, and what a game he had. You know, so it showed not only did they have Gareth McKinnis, who's an all star, they mm. all McAvoy in there who. 
Gary McCallum says I'm getting his place back based upon yesterday. And if, else, if, if anything else goes wrong, Kieran McFall is always there to play a pivotal role in that too. So their depth is there. There's a new rivalry in town and that intensity now will be just simmered down a wee bit. Don't want to put that in the back burner and come the summer whenever we do have another two days of sun, the newspapers you brought out stuck onto the wall and says, remember this, lads. People, someone was asked me today about Dublin and Derry full strength. Dublin sort of players to come back. Dublin do have players to come back, but regardless of how good those players are individually, they're, you're not replacing bad. It's not like club games in a way where you're pre- replacing maybe someone who shouldn't be a senior footballer with a county player coming back in. You're playing real good county players and replacing them with someone a bit better. It's not going to give Dublin an extra 50 or 60 or 70 percent. It will give them a bit more, but Derry will lift that again. <coughs> Derry will lift it again. I suppose obviously Kevin, uh, Kevin Kennedy, obviously you, you even getting track in this game with the stats and I don't presume did you track this game? No, it didn't. As Kevin says earlier on, you know sometimes you're better just enjoying a game for what it is. Yeah. And um, I did that yesterday. You know, I, I put the feet up when I watched it. I will do it during the week because you know I, I don't think there's too many people in Ireland who follow football who won't go back to watch that game again. You know, yeah. coaching has evolved. Coaching has evolved from the minute people who would sit down. The only thing about it is. Kevin, you'll notice from being down at the down match on Saturday night, we only see limited things on TV. That's the worst thing. You know, we only see limited stuff on TV. If you're a coach, and anyone who's watching this now, if you have a, an interest in being a coach, rather than go to your coaching workshops that happen during the winter, get yourself along to top, top games and take it from a completely neutral perspective. See what's going on off the ball. See where the runs are coming from. See what shape player or teams are taking. You'll learn a lot more from watching the good teams. They're worth travelling for. I travel down to watch Kilku all the time because um, they're up and I watch them went burn as well. Go to good teams and you will learn a lot more just by observing what they're doing and what's going on. And um, That Derry and Dublin game yesterday is one of those games whereby you will learn a lot. Yeah, I suppose, obviously. Uh, well, whenever Kevin, I do get the stats, I'll probably watch them Thursday morning. I'll throw them on you. Yeah, and I suppose, obviously, the, the, the Brian Fenton sending off as well. Obviously, what was I supposed to toss and that? Because obviously he was probably you know, he he was kind of brought in and he did kind of get frustrated and then he he pushed. Was it Euron Mon Holland that he pushed over, wasn't it? I think you know, I don't know if it was a bit of a punch or so coming yeah. before that. Uh, where he hit around and he turned around and it. But as soon as you turn around and raise your hands on that, I don't think he hit him. Someone put it up on Twitter earlier on. They had it slowed down to you know it was like a hundred eight year old man walking. It was that bloody slow. And he says, oh, I don't think it was a deliberate strike. And you're going, you know, what, what, why, why are you slowing it down that much? You don't have that in real time. He did yeah. sort of, it was one of them like two-handed push, almost like he tried to grab him sort of thing. But it's a rare card. It's yeah. a rare card. And Brian will, Brian will know that, you know. If this... Yeah, yeah, I think, I think, well, Holland's uh, close fist, though. I think that, that's, that's what initiated. Yeah. Well, it's go- yeah. The most surprising thing was actually Paddy Small. If, you know, if you watch that game back, so you can in the last five minutes. Yeah. Paddy Small was acting a wee bit of an easy, like, you know, at every opportunity, there was push and shove on, there was hit, there was stuff going on, you know, I am no, I wasn't surprised that he was the one that actually, after the hustle and puzzle of Coupling and Push and McCluskey, that he was the one that went hands on, because whenever the camera was on TV, it seemed to be like a pattern, it was like at least twice before that, he was in, giving it a bit of lip, and a bit of slobber and trying to start things, maybe it was come back to the old 90s dub and the dirty dubs as we used to call them. <laughs> um, maybe it's come back to that whenever they, were, they didn't like things going their own way. But it worked. It got their goal um, in the end. Yeah, yeah. God, yeah, it was just such a rip roaring game. I suppose the penalties at the end, Mr. Kenny, suppose, what was the thoughts? And then obviously Derry came out on top. And I suppose Dublin's penalties, very much like our Matt, they need to go back to the drawing board regarding penalties. Yeah, penalties I you know, penalties are here. They're here to stay. Anybody... Kevin's touched on already, the condensed season. That game wasn't for replaying yesterday. None of those teams would have wanted to replay it. They wanted to finish those games and get them out of the way rather than have to reschedule. I mean, it's only 21, 21 days until Derry meet Donegal in the Ulster Championship. The last thing they wanted was a, an end date back down to Crow Park next weekend to play another game. Hmm. So penalties are here. They are, you know, they're probably not what we're used to, but we still even will get used to them. They weren't the greatest of quality penalties. You know, a couple of calm and for the top bin. An inch and a half, two inches lower. It, it wasn't that. Um, both of them hit the post or hit the woodwork anyway, but the dairy penalties were fantastic. Even Connor Glass to step up and hit that penalty. He near took the roof off the bloody net. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh no, just a remarkable game, especially for this time of year, lads. I suppose obviously don't want to always be given out, but I suppose the crowd at Crow Park yes, and obviously of course games are being shown live. A lot of empty seats in the Davin, a lot of empty seats in Hogan, a lot of empty seats in the Cusick as well, lads. Crowd and I suppose the PR around this game, I suppose I can ask both that question, Mr. McCarron. I suppose obviously less of a crowd on Saturday, but division one, maybe a better crowd expected. Yeah, no, definitely you look at um <clears throat> it being you know, a massive sort of showcase event for, for, for Gaelic football and, you know, maybe the GA have missed the trick here in terms of their pricing, you know, why not why not reduce the pricing drastically? I know, yes, there has to be, you know, monetary gains and, and there has to be sort of markers of what you have to charge to make the day financially a successful day. But, um, you know, I think if you trim five euro, you know, off each ticket there, I think you get a massive, you get another five, ten thousand at that game, like you know, and and that's the probably the realities of um the condensed season again. You know, <clears throat> how many dairy people travelled to Dublin on Sunday, um, and 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 maybe you know thinking, oh, you know what, I really don't need this trip today, but mm. I'll go because they know that later in the year they're probably going to be in Crow Park three or four times. So mm. it's strange, um, you know, the fact that we were looking at Crow Park and I, I definitely felt that on, on Saturday night. Like, a, there's no better place to play a final in Crow Park, but mm -hmm. I just find even down, down um, suffered a wee bit in their intensity of their game. Um, you know, I've seen them play in Park Estler there with, with you know, six or 7,000 in it. And, and, you know, last year against Donegal, big crowd in Uri and, and you could see their intent and intensity. So, you know, I think it does have a massive burn on, on how games are played in terms of the intensity, but um, it definitely didn't affect Derry and, and Dublin the way they played. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's something maybe the GA, you know, they're not going to look at it and, and, you know, change the whole thing for this summer and, and attendances, you know, they set their prices and all of that. But uh, it was disappointing just to see that you, you would think that, you know, twenty, thirty thousand would have been at that game. And what what was the final attendance on Sunday? Thirty four thousand. Was it was it thirty four? So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe not bad, but um didn't you know, look like thirty four thousand though. I didn't didn't sure. think so. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mr Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, no, our friend Mal, he put up a picture on the other side, actually away from the cameras, and there was a serious crowd over the far side as well. But again, it was probably as you know equal to what you've seen, so it's double what you've probably seen on TV. I go one step further, you know, if it's going to be a weekend thing, I would drop the price in half. Mm. I'd drop the price in half, give it out to clubs, get them down, make your money on hamburgers and hot dogs and bottles of water and all that jazz and all. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know, I, I would do that. I would get it, and even if it is maybe between the Friday or the Saturday and Sunday, if you're going to the Saturday one, maybe you pay five, ten euro for your ticket for the Sunday as well. Some of them, you know, it's a, it's a really That's, good incentive. Some yeah, it's, You've had these seats, sir. You've had these seats. So if you get someone in for a second day and they're spending 15 euro on food or drink or whatever, that's what you'll yeah. make your money on as well. Yeah, I think to, I think to give uh, club members a fiver off, but I don't think that's not good really. <laughs> Incentivize crowds. Well, yeah. I would go some, it's like, you know, if you buy your Saturday ticket, you get your second one on a Sunday Half for price. five euros. Something, and even if people yeah. bought them and didn't turn up, they went, oh, I'm hungover, I said, spent the night in Dublin, damn, not going to go. That's all right. You'll make five euro of maybe every hundred, hundred people, and that's fine. But you'll get people in through the door. You'll get parents going there and saying, actually, do you know what? It is really worth waiting, getting four games here for 30 euro. Whatever mm. it might be. You wouldn't yeah. get that in a club game, for God's sake. Mm. Yeah, I think we need uh, Del Boy for Holy Fools and Horses to sort the GA out, lads. Any more thoughts on yesterday's game, lads? Am we missing anything? Happy enough, Mr. Kennedy, Mr. McKernan? Yeah, no, just, good. Well done, the whole team. Yeah, yeah. fascinating. Thank uh, you. Fascinating. Yeah, just to see, just to see the the game play that way. Um, you know, the skill level and and execution of some of the scores was was you know, McAvoy's goal to be burned down probably after 80, 90 meters of a run right down Crow Park to then execute a finish like that. It was just brilliant to see and just shows them um, the excitement maybe that lies ahead for us this summer. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's well surmised and, and looking forward to them two teams. Fingers crossed meeting again because, my God, it was absolutely incredible. And obviously a word on Mickey Hart, lads, obviously getting another team over the line at Crow Park as well. That man, he uh, 
yeah, he, he's some man for one man, and fair to him and Horst Devlin are two unbelievable coaches and managers. So, fair play to the gentlemen. And no doubt we potentially might be seeing them walk the steps of Crow Park in July. We will wait and see. And then we'll move on to the other game. Yes, the lads in the Division 2 final. It was Donegal, 15 points. Armagh, 14 points. No extra time needed. No penalties needed. It was a good contest. Um, Armagh probably woke up really for the last 10 or 15 minutes. Not a great performance. I was watching Kieran McGeady after the game. He was basically saying I think six Armagh players uh, were down with a flu and uh, they couldn't partake in much training during the week. And Soupy Campbell was sick leading into the game. So a few bits of bobs going off the field. Uh, Ray O'Neill came on for the last, I think, maybe 50, 20 minutes. So really wouldn't mind know what his input with the Armagh senior team is this year. But um, not a great game, really, Mr. Kennedy, and probably didn't learn a whole pile from it. You're on mute, and that's probably summed up that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, here it says, you know, you probably, I don't buy, I mean, I don't think Ezer's right in saying, you know, the players were trying, that's more of excuses. The game was there for the winning, and it wasn't because they um, they had boys who were sick. You know, it's set up, any commentator, anybody who watches GAA over the last week, way, could have predicted how that game was going to be going to play out. And what it came down to those sort of last 10 minutes, whenever Donegal got tired, you know, we've seen that, We've seen Down on Saturday. We've seen Donegal on Sunday. We've seen Derry before yesterday, whereby these teams who are hard, aggressive, running teams, they'll do really well in the leagues and they will get so far. But Croke Park is a different beast. You know, you I know for a fact, Kerry, we're looking at the Derry game last year and says, if we're in touch here with 65 minutes to go, we'll win this game. Because in all our games, you play club football 60 minutes, Inter County 70 minutes. We don't train beyond that. So your start your engines are starting to go. You're you're running on fumes so those last ten minutes. And the only way you can get to that sort of end line is by conserving as much energy as possible during the game. And the best way you do that is by kicking it. And that's why Derry have brought in a lot more kicking throughout their league. And it was very evident yesterday that their evolution of their game this year has been to work towards playing Crew Park, which is a kicking game. Donegal looked very, very hard in those last ten. And months they didn't defend right up until the 70th minute um and those sort of 15 minutes armagh outscored them five points to zero the rate was on the wall they went ahead everything was falling in the armagh's favor they pressed up as kevin mentioned earlier on you know the the, the change in coaching tactics donny gall i think it was actually um Oshin gallon was left in the armagh half of the field 20 yards away from any armagh defender the Armada defender plus Blaine Hughes was well in front of them. They weren't worried about that. They went up in the press high and they turned the ball over in that sort of half of the pitch. They went to point up and then they dropped off. They dropped off into this we will protect our lead. Don't even go down, sir. Get a point there. And then they're in front again. And that was only after this. I had Armada kept pressing them. Don't go over. Don't go over at the gate. They had no, nothing left in those legs. And you've probably seen that with their last wade. Um, they run the length of the pitch, 21 yards out and kicked away. Everything was gone from them. Their kickouts weren't working for them because Armagh had pressed up. They weren't doing what the runs were there. So it was set up perfectly for Armagh to come through and win the game. But again, whenever Armagh got their nose in front, for whatever reason, there has to be a reason behind it. They've obviously looked at data or looked at something to say this is how we're going to play. Whatever the reason for it, they drop off again and it's cost them. So... That for me is a lesson. You know, you have to go back to the drawing board. They have the players. You know, you've even seen Austin O'Neill coming on and scoring an absolute wonder point. You know, right side, kicking from the right hand side across the face of goal, dropping in, brilliant point. But they got it tactically wrong in those last two or three minutes of the game, whenever they had Donegal at their mercy. I suppose the they also obviously. kicked it away before that. You know, they they did hit the woodwork and a few more. Like it wasn't. You just felt it wasn't Armagh's day from about the fifty fifth minute onwards. Like. Yeah, I suppose, Mr Kennedy, is this another case of, I suppose, Armagh maybe coming up short on these big games at Croke Park? And obviously, it, it, of course, is one point defeat, but I suppose, as you kind of said during the week, no Paddy McBurdy for Johnny Gall. Armagh probably were favourites going into it. So is this maybe another case of maybe Armagh just coming up short on these big occasions in Croke Park? It, 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 for me, it's a tactical thing. You can clearly see what Donny Gall are trying to do. The Jimmy McGuinness, I dare say if you watched, if you counted up every shot throughout every game this so far in the league 
Donegal be head and shoulders above everybody else. They're putting up massive scores because they're hitting an awful lot of shots. Now they only they hit one more shot than Armagh yesterday. I think the score the the shot was twenty nine to twenty eight in Donegal's favour. So in that game, you know, you're hitting near enough sixty shots a game. From a football review committee, what more do we want? You know, that's almost a, a shot um a minute just over it. So there's that. They their conversion rate wasn't great. There was somewhere around about the 50, 53 percent mark. Uh, Arma equally matched them on that. Whereby they were hitting slightly less shots, we bit of a better conversion rate by a couple of percent. But whenever it came to that crunch time, the Arma setup was wrong. I don't. I don't. They. It was clearly intent whereby they did press up. Kaharu Kian put up a, a video or a picture, and you could see. Everybody was pressed up and they were getting turnovers. Whenever our mob press, there's a turnover happens. They're a different team. But it's like the rationale for dropping off is lost on me. You know, I, I can't see why. I remember listening to me podcast where they're going to coach was saying you do a high press for 10 minutes and then you drop off for 10 minutes and then you high press for 10 minutes, and you drop off. And I said, Well, why would you do that? And he had said to keep the other team on their toes. You use Kilku, for example. He says they're a very smart team and they'll click on that you're doing a high press. So that's why you have to keep changing it up. And so I was like, but it's not broke. So why would you change it? Armagh's high press was working. But as soon as they got their noses in front, it was drop back and let's protect our lead. And that can't be the case. Derry wouldn't do that. Dublin wouldn't do that. They would go on and get another score to make it safe to push it over the line. So I think if there's any lessons for it, I do think Armagh are still up there with the best. Um, they have a lot of depth there. You've seen even like Jason Duffy, so Green coming on, um, even Subi Campbell coming on as well. But if you if you have your tactical setup wrong, it doesn't matter who's on that pitch. If you're asking players to drop back, the, the games have evolved beyond that. It's no more about protecting the lead; it's about getting your lead and then pushing on again. Mm. I suppose Kevin, like, is it, Kevin Kennedy, like, is is there a need for Armagh supporters to be a bit frustrated regarding maybe team selection, maybe the way Armagh went about their business yesterday? Like it is coming to the championship, the weeks will be flying by. So, is there a need for maybe for a bit of frustration coming away from Croke Park yesterday? Yeah, you can be as frustrated as you want. It doesn't change the result of the game. You know, as it says, any time you get your, your county plays in Crow Park, it, it's it's not for a bad reason. You know, they can take a lot of positives away from that game. There's probably no team under Jimmy McGuinness. You know, Jimmy McGuinness will not be doing any fancy footwork or any fancy tactics. He'll be doing hard work and aggressive work with that team. So you're probably not going to come up against a team who are more... Um, ready for a match in our Dan Donegal and that's even you know in Mechanic Cup you seen Jimmy McGinnis setting out a stall right from the start he wanted to win that so you're coming up against a hard and ready team there who want to be the best they can be Arma, you could probably call into question as to why some players started why other players didn't you know giving the debut to someone in, in half back in the biggest stage you could call into that what was the thinking behind that but if if Arma again the win was there for them so if they had a one you wouldn't be asking yourself that question. You'd be saying that was a good call to be making. You know, these are the small margins that are in between what's going on. Our math fans will be frustrated. You know, they're they're a well supported team. They do travel a little bit following their team. They'll be a bit disappointed because they were probably heavy favourites going to that match yesterday. That they were maybe expecting a bit of silverware. But if they come away this year having learned from it, which is a big question mark now, because that's a few times I've watched them and they haven't been able to get over the line because they have done something that I wouldn't say is pretty normal. You know, they, they changed something late in the game that isn't, something's working for them, they changed it just for the sake of it, or I can't see the rights all behind it. And if they continue to do that without saying, actually, if it's working, let's just continue to do it until it doesn't work anymore, then they, they'll not go any further than what they've been. You know, that, that's the short reality of it. There's more tactics played in the game the last sort of 10, 12 minutes of a game, including extra time, or included like injury time onto it, than there probably is for the whole 50 minutes before that. First 10 minutes of any game is about finding your feet and just, just one of them mistakes happen and you have to read that. Again, getting the half 10 is very important, but the winning of a game is those last 10, 12 minutes, especially when things are tight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose uh, Kevin McCarron a word on Donegal. Obviously, Oshin Gallon five points, Karen Thompson three points, Nora Donald three points. So it was a nice spread of scores there. Obviously, Oshin Gallon really stepping up to the mark when Paddy McBurdy was injured for this particular game. Oshin Gallant really is a player that can lead this Donegal cause forward this year, along with Mr. McBurdy. Yeah, no, you look at um, sort of all the key All-Ireland contenders and, and they all have that sort of sharpshooter who's going to score sort of 
any from anything from one four to six or seven points. And you know, when when that reliance was always on Paddy McBrady and Michael Murphy, um, you know, when one was injured, um, any team that was playing against them maybe took a big sigh of relief. Um, but when you look at this Donegal team now, McBrady missing at the weekend. Um, how bad is he that he could be gone for the season? Um, it hurts something a bit. Uh, and the injury you mentioned um, publicly, has that been announced where he is at with his injury? I'm not sure, has it? I, yeah. I haven't I seen it, no. No. So, like, how, how bad is that? But, like, mm. I think yesterday, Niall O'Donnell at not three as well with, with Gallon at, at, at not five. So, you know, Kieran Thompson comes in with his normal two or three points and, and three right points, back yeah. down. Right back down to uh, Morgan, Peter Morgan, and and Caelan McGolligan, great outside of the boot point as well. So, you know, when when you have those scores coming from three or four different areas, it helps. And I think, you know, Donegal sitting, um, you know, in a, in a tough position going to Derry, um, it's going to be some game because if, if they can turn Derry over, my goodness, uh, Jim McGuinness will not have to do much. Uh, much coaching or you know the team will just be bouncing so um you know it's going to be a fascinating game and, and i think when you look at that Donegal uh team and um, they're probably they're probably going to need um uh, mcgrady back to really contend but um i think they have plenty in their locker there to, to hurt teams at the minute but um you know Paddy mcgrady any day um is going to just give a team another man to mark and another sort of headache so listen it'll be good it'll be good for Donegal to get that game in Derry because it's probably a, a game a shot to nothing really, you know, nobody will expect them to turn Jerry over and, and you know, that'll be that'll be massive for McGuinness just to sell that to that team, you know. I suppose like are, are we sleeping at Donegal a good bit early? Are we giving them as much credit as I suppose they deserve a bit more credit? Obviously, Jim McGuinness come back and really has reignited the flame with Donegal, uh, Mr. McCarran. And like are we are we giving Donegal enough credit? Like we probably should be oh, he, he put the praise on them. Or, or? I think it's massive. You know, I, I watched Donegal last year in Uri and you know, their management team was put in place very late. Paddy Carr and Aidan O'Rourke were, were dealt a card that has probably happened in down as well, whereby a management team goes in very late. But, you know, when you see McGuinness coming back as a player outside of Donegal, I looked at it going, there'll be a kick in this team. Like, and the difference in a year, like even looking at some of the Donegal players there, to me, it's strange watching Donegal and not seeing Neil and Eamon McGee and you know, Carl Lacey and all these lads that, that have carried that um, sort of fight for them. You know, Keel McGonagall, massive player for them now. You're looking at Tier Moore and um, Kevin McGettick. You know, Kevin McGettigan was playing at six yesterday, I think, or five. And, and, you know, these are players that really, to everybody, is just not really as well known. And and they're absolutely firing for, for McGuinness at the minute because, you know, he's got them in a structured defence of, um, you know, being you know, man to man only on a pitch and, and you know, with without playing out and out sweepers as such. And he's he's being sort of very creative in how he understands um yes, it's it's a it's a blanket defence, but it's a blanket defence from a higher place now. You know, he's bringing in a few soccer tactics that maybe um, you know, can can be sort of used in Gaelic and, and you know, the turnovers they got yesterday at key points, um, you know, hand passes in and around the D and and a Donegal man left his own man knowing that he could commit to a turnover. So, um, you know, they're they're in a really good place compared to where they were last year. And and if McGuinness gets another kick out of them this summer, um, landing into Division One next year, I would say he'll be using next year as his as his year to properly properly push for 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 an All Ireland, no doubt. Mm. Yeah, don't know. Give him. A, I know Derry are flying has been, but I really do give Donegal a big shout against Derry in a few weeks' time. And no better man to upset the upper car than Mr. McGuinness. I suppose no better man task on Saturday night, Mr. Karen in the Alliance National Football League Division Three final. It was down against Westmead. It ended up Westmead two ten down thirteen points on Saturday night. Interesting comments by Desi Dolan after the game. He basically said the lads would not be sampling the point because the biggest game of the year is next weekend I think, against Wicklow, if my memory serves me correctly. Good win for us. Me, go to show maybe the pressure that is in the game at the minute. The rugby players get to drink, the GA players don't. But Mr. McCarron, the thoughts on this game? Yeah, it was it was disappointing from a down um, perspective. Um, you know, going down to Crow Park, you know, two years in a row in, in two finals and, and, and being beaten last year by Meath and beaten this year by Westmeath, you know, um, 
when you you know when you take on a group of players um, like Connor has and and Kieran Mina has now been added to it this year. You know they would have been eyeing that Division Three promotion as a key key um, target this year after missing out last year. And when you get to a final, you know the confidence that you know I know when down under twenties won Ulster. You know that was something massive. Um, that Ulster hadn't been won since I think two thousand and six, two thousand and seven. We won back to back under twenty ones, and we've done the same now. And you know the backbone of that under twenty uh, under twenty one team I was involved in myself. It was five or six of us transferred onto the senior team within two years. So that same sort of um, pathway is happening with the current team. Um, you know, we missed out on league titles as well, uh, Division Three and Division Two, uh, beaten by Armagh in Division Two finals. So, you know, winning at Crow Park would have given this team a massive injection of, of belief going into the Oscar Championship because, you know, Antrim, Cumberland and Uri, They'll be looking at that game on Saturday night, like and their lips are down now, going, you know, if West Mead can turn them over, if Mead can turn them over last year, and the same tactic was used, you know, a real deep line defence, um, down trying to run the ball through. And I think that was one downs and I was disappointed because they've been kicking the ball a lot in the league um so far. And I just felt they just didn't kick the ball enough the other night. There was opportunities. You know, it didn't have to be a good kick pass. It just needed to be released out of defence and let the pace go from there. But, um, you know, we're all experts. And I know Connor, Connor Laverty and Mina, you know, they wouldn't have set their stall out massively not to kick the ball. I think if the opportunity was there, Oren Murdoch was in full forward. It was tried once or twice. You know, I just think on the night, um, the nerves that came from two absolute disaster goals. Like, you know, if you take those two goals out of the game, um, it's 13-10, and, and people say, yeah, take them out of the game. The first one was a mishit shot. It wasn't dealt with. It was a mismatch on Down's part. Um, John McGovern got badly caught out, and, and you know, Down haven't got caught out like that all year with, with that type of goal. And and the second goal was a missed run. Daniel Guinness, you know, he doesn't normally let that run happen. He's physical, and he and he's aggressive, and he missed that, and and uh, the same fella goes in for for a second goal, uh, Jonathan Einem. So, you know, Down will be encouraged by promotion, but they'll be massively disappointed at the weekend. And you know, I suppose from a management point of view, they just use that now to say, you know, let's go again. You know, the, the hurt from that, they'll carry that in Antrim and um, in Park Esther, and you know, the opportunity to try take on Armagh again um, will be huge for Down. And I think that's I think that's something that. You know, the team now reset their goal and, and, and try, unfortunately, try to get into Sam Maguire through an Ulster Championship as opposed to, um, you know, with the league the league places of Clare being, being given an opportunity in Munster by, by playing uh, seed 32 and seed 30 in the league at the minute, which is just skewed. But disappointing night from a down point of view, but um, massive energy and massive sort of belief in the team that, you know, they're out of Division 3, which is huge. And, you know, next year should be exciting to, to play, face up against Cork, Louth, um, and and Monaghan and that. So, yeah, positive year so far. Massive, massive disappointment. But, um, looking forward to seeing where championship goes now. Yeah, and obviously, yeah, Mr. McCarran, obviously, Pat Haven uh, chipping in with seven points, seven, so seven frees. You, you suppose you have to be really impressed with the way. So, was that man's moving? He's he's dead. He accurate. Probably has a kind of a unique way of kicking the ball. But in fairness, it's working for him. Oh no, he's kicking. He's kicking really well. Like, and people, you know, with reflecting on the game, um, you know, people saying, "Oh, they, they nearly relied on freeze." Like, every one of those freeze came as a result of massive energy, massive intent to go for a gap. Um, if one or two of those fouls don't happen, it was nearly a goal chance on multiple occasions. And um, I think actually over the weekend, I don't know what your opinion is on this, but you know, the new rule of stopping a goal score ch- chance from the 20 meter 21 meter line you know i think there was moments in 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 all games i think definitely in in the Donegal Armagh game um and and in the Dublin and, and Derry game and again in the down uh game against Westmeath where where teams were right through two or three meters from getting close to um a shooting opportunity and a foul was made you know so you know, I think that the rule the rule is probably in favour of it's one on one, there's nobody getting back and it's a foul so it's a penalty. So 
I just thought there was moments for down the other day where fouls were made just outside the penalty box. There was goal chances on and, and you know, it, it didn't become a penalty. So I would love to see that rule book. Here's me saying I felt it was. I would love to see the rule uh, crystal clear about that because, um, you know, seven frees for down suggests there was a lot of tactical fouling going on to yeah. stop goal chances. But, you know, uh, on the night, you know, you're watching the game as a supporter. When you watch it back, could some of those be yellow cards? Look, seven fouls from score by positions, that needs punished. But um, listen, down, soccer punch goals against them. Pat's playing really well. And, and you know, between Pat Haven and, and Liam Kerr, Owen Murdoch, Ryan Johnson was a bit, big miss. We could have been doing with kicking points from from, from further out. Um, you know, the nerves of, of missing a few chances, turning down the opportunity to kick the ball over from 35, 40 metres. Lads are well fit to do it. Um, and I think just the nerves the other night probably prevented them from pulling the trigger a wee bit sooner. I suppose I'm just kind of looking through the down uh, team sheet here from Saturday night's uh, game, Kevin. So I was looking like, it, it, is this a team that's probably going to be a, like a very good team, collective? There's no going to be stars of the likes of, you know, we, I know Marty Clark is still involved, but like when Marty was at his pomp or Benny Coulter, even I suppose yourself, like no we're kind of real stars to your names. It's probably a very good team collective. Yeah, like, the, you know, you look at them the other night and, and <coughs> there was three or four lads on the bench that, you know, um, like Ryan McGill from my own club, um, on the bench, Niall McParland, um, you know, Niall's been about there a good bit for, for the past sort of eight to nine years. Keelan Mooney, a big miss. Ryan Johnson, Sheelan Johnson. Down are probably three or four short um, of, of of another few options that they have, but they're all very similar. And, and listen, if you, if you look at most teams now, you know, bar, you know, your standout, Con O'Callaghan or, or Clifford or whatever, you've, you've got really athletic players, really fast players. Um, and at the minute down down are carrying the same same type of player and and, and you know we, we're not blessed in our county with six foot four man mountains around the middle you know and, and you know most teams really you know bar a couple of six foot two players you know you have to go for a really athletic pacey player at the minute the way the game's go on and you know that down team they have all the you know I watched their warm up the other night and, and very sort of pacey running, hard running with the ball, one-on-one defended. You know, they are they are a core sort of group of, of fast players. And, and, you know, Connors had to cut his cloth to suit. Um, you know, we aren't blessed with, with physically tall players, uh, but we have good footballers and we have fast footballers. And, and that's how he's built that team, you know. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, on they go to the championship. I'm being interested to see how down fair out in the ultra championship in the next couple of weeks ends ahead. And then we'll move on to the Division 4 final on Saturday. It was Leach against Leitrim. It was Leach, Leach uh, 314, Leitrim 9 points in Crow Park. Not the day the Leitrim fans, supporters, management team wanted on Saturday night, Mr. Kennedy and um, Joseph McNulty. Nearly cracked a smile after the game. It's hard to get that man smiling, but Mr. Kennedy, Leach are Division 4 champions. And you're on mute. <laughs> he, he, sh- he should be smiling. He was off work for something like three, two, two and a half, three years. I get to five hundred pounds. Hey, left here next week for no reason. Anyway, yes, no. Here I have to say, fair play to Justin. He's got an awful lot of flack up here around about, and um, more, more from his own party than anybody else around about taking on that job. Um, thank God there was no assembly call for Saturday morning. <laughs> Otherwise, he, he made it at the crew park. But no, I think Leash, to be fair, they down absolutely annihilated them last year. It was probably the lowest day in football history for the county of Leash and that day in Crew Park. But they regrouped. They've come back and now not only are they in Division 3 next year, they're also going in as the winners of Division 4. This is interesting what Kevin says around about, you know, the, the West made goals in the down. And not many people would look at from a performance point of view or, or coaching point of view, taking the scores rather than the total of the scores. So those two goals are two scores. They're not six points. On the day, they're six points from a coaching point of view. They're they're just two scores that you could look at preventing later on. But Leash weren't that way. Even you take the goals out of it, Leash were still five points better than what Leitrim were. It was just a game whereby everything went right for Leitrim or everything went right for Leash. They looked a lot more conditioned than Leitrim. They didn't. Leitrim looked a wee bit 
No, they got rounded in certain places. They weren't, um, I don't think they were up to playing on Croke Park and that certainly told on them by the end. They'd done all right at the start of the game, but then as the, the game went on, they um, they were caught out. And I think Andy Moore, to be fair to him, he came out and he was spending laughter. Great day for Leitrim football to be playing in Croke Park. I think it was yeah. the sixth time in their history. So yeah. the idea taken away, um, Mickey Hart's right, wins, you know, Mr. Mickey never right. He, um, these, we, we might look at Dublin and say they're playing every week, give them a bit of a break for, for teams like Antrim, teams like Leitrim. We don't get there too often, and it's whenever we get there, it, it's worth getting to. You know, it is something for the county to celebrate. Leitrim are up in the Division 3. They're probably going up a bit like Wicklow did last year. They'll be fancy to go straight back down. I think Leash will be fancy to hold on up in there. Um, they'll probably be akin to what Sligo were this year. But... You know, it's it's good to see Leash progress in a wee bit. Um, if they were able to sustain themselves in Division 3 for a few years before moving up into Division, higher division, maybe up in Division 2, maybe go off for a bid, as uh, Johnny was telling me off for the other week, maybe they will beat Kildare next year in the league and give us something to get excited about Leinster football for. But I'll not hold my breath on that one. Not a game for the ages. It was sort of, you know, the... the the worst game possible was probably, from a spectator point of view, it was probably the first game. It got a bit better um, in the Down West Mead game, a bit better in the Armagh, and then see everything for Sunday. So, um, no, it, it set us up well. So, there's not much more analysis you can do than that and just say fair play, rebuild, and go again next year, lads. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just felt so sorry for Leitrim. Like, I know, obviously, it's, it's the big day, but it just really was the goal from class. I, I didn't think it was going to be that margin. I thought Leitrim were going to win the game, but, yeah, uh, hard luck to Leitrim and the lads. And, obviously, uh, Mickey and Andy will get the lads uh, motoring for the college championship, I suppose, lads. It's championship, championship time once again. It's hard to believe it's swung around championship time in April. Um, Loads and loads of games this weekend. Obviously, on Saturday and Sunday, you have Connacht championship action, you have Leinster championship action, you have Munster championship action, and, of course, Ulster Championship action. So it's all starting this weekend, lads, on Saturday, the 6th of April, in the Connick Senior Football Championship quarter final. You have London against Galway in McGovern Park in Ryslip at 3 p.m. Um, I suppose, Mr. McCarran, obviously, Galway probably a good chance to stretch your legs. Yeah, I think the um, opportunity to for, for Galway in particular after after a rough enough league with injuries. They'll be hoping to have men back pretty soon. Um, the the want for them to, to be classified as a top sort of six team. Um, you know they've been there thereabouts. Um, you know between All Ireland semi final final. Um, you know they'll be using that game to to try sort of get that ebb back in their game that they've been missing. And uh, you know there's no better way than than coming off a a disappointing league campaign. Um, albeit they, they did stay up um, to launch themselves into championship and, and kept a bit of positivity back in their game because um, when Galway play football well, they're a nice team to watch and I think um, you know, you'll know you see a, a total different intensity around how they play because championship football is, is, is different and, and Galway will approach that, um, I'm sure, in, in, a, in a very sort of... Um, Straightways way because you know they have been there and thereabouts and and their game against Galway and Armagh came back into my head after the the Donegal or the Derry and and Dublin game so um I think Galway they'll they'll, they'll fine tune their their system and their forward play and, and I think they'll be they'll be probably in in a Connacht final I would say yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And Sunday's action in the Connacht Senior Football Championship quarterfinals this time around. It's New York against Mayo in Gaelic Park. And of course, the game will be at 8pm Irish time. Mr. Kennedy, very, very much like Galway. Very good opportunity for Mayo to stretch legs. I suppose it depends what Mayo turn up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, look, it is. It's a good chance for, for Mayo to get boys playing a bit of football out there nice wee break away they probably need a bit of a break after their uh, legal set up I, you know I'm not a fan of the football they play but I'm I'm, I'm in I'm in awe of the depth that they do have in there um, and sometimes especially when they do press a team they can be a very very talented team whenever they go about the game in the right way New York you know New York I, I, this is where probably the system needs to change a wee bit, whatever the, the review committee comes up with or whether there's a, a programme like that. Having New York playing Mayo isn't for. Maybe it is a case that these are 
I don't know, earlier in the year, so we've got, um, it's probably a game that Mayo could do without. Be for them, they'll probably want an extra bit of a week off or so like that then too. We know, we, with all due respect to New York, they got a result last year, but playing later and playing Mayo are two different animals altogether. Who's going to win? Mayo, uh, I don't think the boogies would be taking a, a handicap on it, would they? <laughs> oh, that's the frightening part. And that's that no right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we're looking for to Cavan and, Cavan and Monaghan on Sunday as a chance for, I mean, you're talking about uh, Rory Began actually coming back in and playing, so we'll talk about it in a second, but there's there's an atmosphere building around those, where on the other hand, you have in Connacht, you have London, but they don't the disrespect to them players or their management, they'll know exactly what I'm on about. You have London and Mayo coming against teams that should be finding themselves in the latter stages of the All-Iron Championship later on. I hope that's an April Fools with Rory Beckham coming back for the game this weekend. I really do. Uh, Leitrim against Sligo. Avant put money. Park Sean McDermott at half three. Nice tight one there, Mr. McKernan. I think it's just, it's mad to think that Leitrim, you know, they've only played in Crow Park six times in in, in the existence of, of the GA. And, and then they're they're now, you know, forced, you know, their hands been forced then to turn around quickly and, 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 play, and play Sligo. So, you know, I think the the game the other day they conceded two five or two six inside, you know, ten or twelve minutes. Um, you know, you could just see the conditioning. They've had they've had a heavy league campaign. Campaign. They got promoted. You know, the bodies are probably needing two weeks of rest, and then they have to go again now against the Sligo team that had a massive result against West Mees, uh, on their last day out. So, um, listen, it'll it'll be it'll be hard to look past the Sligo win, but. Can can Leitrim then sort of gather enough um, enough positivity and and enough um, sort of energy to go again? You know, absolutely, there has to be a kick in a team that got promoted, and you know, Andy Moore's gone in there with with a really good sort of um, mindset that that you know his Mayo days as a player, you know, he's gone there and changed the mentality around Leitrim football and and the fact that they can compete. Outside of that, um, you know, Division Four, eight teams. So, you know, you could see what Wicklow did this year with with Ocean McConville. You know, probably a performance or you know two away from from staying up, but reasonably competitive in most games. But, um, you know, I think when you when you see Leitrim and, and Sligo on on Sunday, um, you'll probably see a, a, the step up that Leitrim are going to have to make to to be competitive in Division Three next year, and and it'd be hard to look past a Sligo win. You'd have to oh, wonder yeah. what the logic is behind Connacht and also Lancer. You know, Ulster have the most teams who play football. There's nine counties in Ulster play football, and they have one game this weekend. Yeah, and the rest are spread out. You know, throughout them. Why does I don't know a lot. I don't know. I've never asked the questions online, but why is the Connacht and Lancer have to throw theirs all in in one weekend and get it over with instead of breaking it up right? Because the Ulster Championship doesn't finish to what the last week of May or so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, strange, definitely, even you just look at and at such, hopefully, what's happened this year in, in the leagues, you know, the championship structure, it'll have to change because when you think of Mayo going to New York, you know, you think of Galway going to London, um, Clare having to play Tip or Waterford, and then you look at the Ulster teams, like we've been saying it for years, you know, it's an absolute dogfight up here to then go and lift yourself for an All-Ireland when other teams, you know, the top four or five teams in Ireland are getting an absolute bayball in seventy five percent of their games. So yeah. you know, it's just it's 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 madness to think that it's existed for so long and, and unfortunately our sort of parochial sort of love of the Ulster Championship has held us back from actually realising it's hurting our teams. You know, it really is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as Kevin Kennedy said there, yeah, a, a trip for me over to, a trip for me over to New York this weekend. It's it's hard to know what purpose it really is serving. Maybe a few points after the game for the Mayo lads, but it's hard to really know. And then moving on to, oh, here we go, lads. The Leinster Championship really gets the juices flowing. Not sure about that. Westmead and Wicklow in Leash, Higher Moor Park, half three, Mr. Kennedy on Sunday. Yeah, they're a free hit, Wicklow. Um, Wicklow. We'll be looking to the Talchin Cup of some redemption for the how they performed in the league this year and having to get relegated down there. People say they were unlucky against Antrim. 
Uh, Oshie McConville listening to him, he says, you know, they had their chances. They did, but Antrim were, you know, a far better team than them on the day. The scoreline didn't reflect the game. Antrim were totally dominant. And had they taken their chances, it would have been five, six, seven points that the, the game, you know, would have finished up. And Wickler were up against it against Westmead. Westmead would be flying high after the weekend. Um, really interesting, actually, you know, the, the market laid out for a few beers after. Probably makes sense, the game being a week away. But, you know, I think with the Someone shared in the group there with Derry or down in the Frank McQuiggan pub with the Allianz Division 1 title down in there. They'll be on the drink maybe today, yesterday, today, and they'll be back in training tomorrow night to run it out of them. Unfortunately for Westmead, they don't get that opportunity. You know, there's no two ways about it. You can't go in the beer celebrating things two days before and then take a chance, even though they'll be heavy favourites against Wickle. Hmm, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Then moving on to Longford against Mead in Glen Rose, uh, Pierce Park at 3 pm on Sunday, Mr. McKernan. Yeah, no, I think it'll be a, a convincing Mead's win, to be honest. Um, you know, Longford have, have probably battled rightly in Division 4, but, um, you know, they'll be open, hopefully, for a, for a championship atmosphere in, in a small, tight ground. Um, the fact that they're getting that home venue um, is probably the, the thing that'll close a gap between probably five or seven points to, to maybe making it a, a tight enough game towards the last 15 minutes. But um, I think Mead definitely started to kick in the gear in, in, in large parts of, of um, the latter uh, latter end of the league after a disappointing start. I think they were in the draw with Fermanagh at home at the start um, yes. to then, you know, probably getting a couple of good 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 victories to keep themselves in, in that division. So, no, a Mies, a Mies win probably by five or six points, I'd say. Hmm, I think so, I think so. And then Wexford against Carlo in Chadwick's Wexford Park at half two. Mr. Kennedy. This will probably be, you know, apart from the Ulster Championship, this will probably be the one that you probably be drawn to in terms of an actual game. You know, there wasn't much between them in the league. I think Waxford were unlucky not to get promoted in Division 3, and I think Waxford may have finished two, buzz, two points above them um, in the league. But I don't think a quality will be there. I don't think it'll be a game for the ages. But if you're, you know, if you're a batting man, you might want to look for a draw in there. You might want to look for something a bit of interest. At least it'll be, a, I think it'll be a close enough contest. But I do think Waxford will come out on top. Yeah, absolutely. And then Munster Senior Football Championship quarterfinals this Sunday. You have Walford against Tipperary in Fraherfield at 2 p.m. Mr. McKernan. Yeah, listen, it'll be a game that both teams will look at and, and see it as a pretty competitive opportunity and um, sort of to develop their squad after a difficult um, league campaign for both. And, you know, they'll be looking towards then a, a taking a shot at Clare. Um, you know, again, an opportunity of, a, a, you know, a sort of free hit at a game where Clare have been relatively impressive this year after losing a lot of men. So um, probably a, a, a temporary win maybe, but... Um, if if Waterford uh, using their home advantage could get a big win there, there could be a championship, a championship feel for a county that you know are, are pushing hard to keep the game, um, you know, progressing in their county in, in probably difficult circumstances with funding and whatnot. But um, yeah, I think a, a temporary win, but uh, Waterford might look at it for for a bit of a a shock and, and a go a clear. Home advantage as well, so wait and see. And then you have Cork against Limerick in Parky Cueve at 2 p.m. Sorry, Super Value Parky Cueve, Mr. McKennedy. Yeah, that's probably about the most interesting thing of that game, is what they'll be calling <laughs> it on TV. No, um, I think that you know, Cork will walk that one. Limerick ran a bad way, he's shown in their league there, they ran a bad way. Um, as I says, you know, whenever Wicklow played Andrum, Andrum had it taken, had it played anybody else apart from. Wicklow or Limerick that day, they're about to get beat. It just shows you how bad Limerick football is whenever I'm saying that. So, yeah, I don't know where Limerick football goes. They were in Division 2 last year. You know, let's not forget that. This year has just completely went tits up for them. Um, and they are where they are. Cork will, Cork will see it as a good opportunity just to get a bit of stretch in the legs and prefer, prepare for Kerry, who will be out on the out in Portugal this week. Sounds nice, sounds nice. Biggest game of the weekend, lads, probably by a country mile in the Ultra Senior Football Championship preliminary round. It's Monaghan against Cavan in Clonus at 4pm. Of course, the game will be live on RT2 and the BBC. Mr. McKernan, no love lost between these two teams. I'll throw it back at you. You're well-dressed for tonight. Away you go. I know. 
Yeah, no, we're well, looking forward to it. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, no, I think Monaghan, uh, Monaghan probably owes one at this stage. We, we we bet them in 2019 and 2020, so they'll be mad <clears throat> put one over, especially after such a kind of a poor league, can, can, league campaign. So, yeah, it's going to be good. Uh, I hope to go, we can kind of improve on our last three performances in the league campaign and we can really kind of step up. It's it's clear to be seeing Paddy Lynch is probably going to be a, a, like a mark man this weekend down in Clone. So it'll be interesting to see what Monaghan, I suppose, ploy what their ploy is for him. And obviously, you know, there is a kind of a, a be, will be a lot of pressure on him. Obviously, Monaghan, you know, it's home advantage for them. And obviously, the look of joy we've had against them in recent years, they will be kind of feeding off that as well. As Mr. Kennedy said, if that's true about Rory Began potentially being back in the Monaghan setup, I really do hope that is. Uh, and April Fool, because my God, he's, he adds so much to that Monaghan team. But it's going to be a good game. Uh, I'd say there will be a nice big crowd at it. Um, I think it's it's going to be tight. These games are always very, very tight. Conor McManus, the difference in years gone by, like you can always remember 13 and 15 and 17 when he was just the peak of his powers and he shot the lights out. So be interested to see what Conor McManus' role is, is on Sunday as well. So it's going to be a good game, lads. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, and yeah, it's it's it's, it's probably the standout game uh, this weekend by a mile, Mr. McCarran. Call it, call it. I'd love to see us get the over the line. I'd love to see us get the over the line. Um, it's kind of the hearts at the minute saying Cavan, but the brain is for some reason saying Monaghan. The splinters are your arse, John boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know. I just think Monaghan <laughs> might get over the line. Oh, I don't know. Heart saying Cavan, but the brain just says Monaghan. Just have a bit of unfinished business with us, but it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. Draw game. <laughs> Jinx so draw. Yeah. Uh, when you when you look at you look at how tight the games were at the weekend. Um, you know, any one of the division one, two, and three games could have been you know a draw. Um, with with particularly the the Derry and, and Dublin game just ending up that way because it was back and forward and and Donegal Armagh the same. So I always just think you know most championship games. Um. They're at the point at which the margins are so tight. I think you always get a draw here and there. I think that could be my draw this weekend. Yeah. Extra time penalties. All this. What <laughs> do you think? What do we think, Mister Kelly? Begging, will take out his, his American football helmet. <laughs> Okay, if he's back, be, uh, if he's back, if yeah. he's back, we don't know. We don't know. I, I, I'm fretting here. I'm fretting here, Mister Kennedy. Yeah, look, Kevin's touched on there. There's never any difference. We t- we consider Calvin. Weren't unlucky not to get promoted, but they were definitely in the hunt coming in there. Monaghan were always getting relegated after maybe you know three weeks in the, from into the challenge, into the league campaign. They're in both Division Two teams next year. They're on a level playing field as far as this weekend goes. And different if you have Division One Mayo playing New York. That's a written, you know that that story's wrote itself beforehand. But whenever there's not much between teams, and especially the way a lot of teams set up now that they're very, they, they've one chance at it, and it is about closing games off and taking the opportunities wherever they come. Our Ma, Ma, Monaghan play the slowest football out there. Even if Rory Began comes back, Monaghan play the slowest football. They continue to go around that arch, and that plays into teams like Cavan, who can set up backwards and s- set up behind the ball and allow Paddy to set up there by himself. If they get that kicking game right, it'll make it very interesting. I'll go right down to the wire. There's no doubt about it. Was Cavan a couple of years in Currigan, a couple of years ago against Antrim and Currigan Park, and going forward, they were fantastic. They were great going forward. They created a lot more goal opportunities than what the game actually gave them credit for. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's going to be tight, lads. It's going to be tight. I think everyone will be tuning into that on Sunday. So, really looking forward to it. It's great to see the first uh, RTE live game of the year as well. So, hopefully, it serves up a trailer, lads. Fingers crossed. Um, really quick fire questions uh, that were sent into the uh, sh- uh, by Twitter yesterday. So, thanks everyone for engaging. Uh, if we could just run through these very quickly, lads. Uh, Jonathan Byrne, of course, Jonathan Byrne won the podcast lads. So, congratulations to you, Jonathan. Your question was uh, only man to win a medal in all four divisions. Am I right by saying Chrissy McCaig? Has to be, yeah, maybe. Yeah. And Rogers as well. Yeah, I was thinking there could be another player that was in all, you know, all four teams. Um, there was a stat there that there was five players that played in Division Four. So surely one of those five players is with Chris McHugh as well. Don't know. But yeah, or something. Shame we're going. You'd imagine if it was five of them, not imagine Kevin, then there has to be a few of them more in there. Yeah. yeah, maybe yeah. start. Maybe they probably started every game or so. Like that's probably different. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good question, but John. Now, make no doubt about it. Another question here: Should referees be graded by their performances and only referee bigger games on point system, or is this discrimination, Mister Kennedy? 
I think they are. I think referees are great at after games and stuff in terms of performance. Um, you'll not, you know, Paul Flume, for example, is a is a very good referee, but you'll you'll not see somebody who's jumping from maybe an Antwerp final jumping up into an Ulster final next week. You have to work, you have to work your way up, and you're constantly being reviewed and refereed. So I think that happens. It just doesn't happen the way the Irish news rank rank players at the end of, you know after every match. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, does the very realistic possibility that Down could miss out on a Sam spot if Clare beat Waterford and Tip and Munster show up a massive flaw in how provincial ties into the All Ireland? How can it be fixed? Also, how big is how big an achievement is Derry winning the Division One five years after being in Division Four? I'll throw that one on you, Mister McKernan. Yeah, probably the 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 one I've already probably recapped. I just think there's a huge flaw in. In that, but I think there could be a, a seeding system done on, um, you know, more seeds in favour of the Ulster Championship based on how many teams are in Division One and Division Two. So any Ulster, any province that has, you know, maybe over fifty percent of their teams in Division One or Two should get more seeds. So there has to be something creative done because, um, even the the championship structures. Each province having different amount of teams in it, eleven, nine, would you know, just I just look at it going, there has to be a wee bit more creativity. Um the other one, what was the terminology you used there for the other one? Um yeah, do Derry was it yeah, yeah so just yeah. How low how low Derry got to, you know, was a point of um transition of a team, you know, a lot of retirements and then, you know, equally so between management teams as well, how they ended up in Division Four. You know, I remember at a time in Down, we lost five or six key men in one year. Um, Dan, Dan Gordon, Benny, mm-hmm. Danny Hughes, Ronan Murda, Dan McCartan. You just yeah. lost Down. I remember losing that group of players, and the next year we were in Division One, uh, Division Two. Then, and it just it was just so hard to cope with it. Um, you know, thankfully we never went to Division Four. Um, but you know, for Derry to end up in Division Four was ma- mind boggling at the time. I just remember saying to myself, "That is so strange seeing Derry play against Waterford, seeing Derry." You know, it was just mad. But um, you know, just goes to show you with with the next layer of players coming, they've always got the conveyor belt of of school football coming. Um, and I think just that one off, uh, one off sort of loss of a lot of players left them struggling at the time. Now all of a sudden they have that building sort of momentum of of players on board, county board on board, and management on board, which you know just signifies one thing, and it's that gradual improvement, and that's why we see them now as all Ireland contenders. Mm, yeah, that was a really good question from Global Gaelic Games. So thank you very much. Question in here from Niall Furlong. Um, it's an interesting one, uh, Mr. Kennedy. How much of a detrimental effect is the Ultra Championship going to have on Derry? And would they benefit in the long run from losing to Donegal? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> No idea. Um, the good thing is that Donegal played yesterday and Derry also played yesterday. So both of them are going into the game on the 21st of May, having the same recovery period as went on. You know, the extra time will not play in the legs an awful lot. You know, they'll probably take a bit less out of Derry this week, um, a bit less twin this week. Donegal will probably go a wee bit heavier towards the end of the week. But yeah, both teams will be getting into that game with eyes wide open, wanting to win. You don't really have to listen to Mickey Hart. You know, he wants to win everything. Um, he wants to win everything. They they can win Ulster again this year. They, they no doubt they can win Ulster again this year. They still need to improve to win an All Ireland this year. I think that rather than having the impact of what Ulster can do or what Ulster has on the team, it's actually how you play. It's already playing in Clonus or Neary or somewhere. There's a different base that you play and whenever you come to play in Crow Park. And now Derry have brought in that kicking game to it. They can play in Crook Park. They couldn't play in Crook Park last year. They were set up to fail in Crook Park last year, despite having the opportunity to win the game. But they after 65 minutes, they they died off. I don't think it'll be the Ulster Championship has a negative effect on them. If anything, it's just that they're now better prepared to go into that latter stages of the All Ireland because they have more players plus at different levels of their game. Yeah, yeah, very good answer, Mr. Kennedy. Uh, Dave Higgins sent this question in, Mr. McKernan. Uh, where should the place the Mickey Hart statue? <laughs> it's, it's it's like anything that 
the rivalry and and you know sort of hatred hatred between counties if if you put it that way like there is that want for another team to maybe struggle but um when you see Derry on an on a upward curve uh, you know the Tyrone um sort of add on factor of Mickey coming on board really when when you take the counties out of it you just have an an elite level manager managing an elite level team and really you know they're they're going to come within a kick of the ball of winning all Ireland either this year or next year. So um, yeah, the statue don't know where it's going to be played. <laughs> <laughs> Besides Frank, we we look at Barr. He'll in, probably uh, set beside uh, Oisin McConville and Mickey, or Megal Murphy on the BBC's uh, championship view this year. He didn't get into a few bits of hot water with Oisin last year. Maybe it'll <laughs> just be Jander on the menu, Oisin, and he's done it again. Oh, Lord, yeah. Oh, no, Mickey for BBC this year, of course. Oh, God, there we go. A very serious question here now, as we said from Colin Garvey. What current or former inter-county star do people reckon could down the most pints in a single session, Mr. Kennedy? Jesus. Um, I'd probably say, depending on how Joe Sheridan's going at the minute, he might be down the whole <laughs> straight now. He give anybody a run for their money. Uh, Probably someone like I, I listened Wigley. to uh, the Rocks podcast the other day in the BBC and I liked him. He seemed like a lot. He was good crack. I'd say yeah. if he had a rig of paints, then he might be alright. Plus he's a he's a man mountain, so there's plenty of volume to fill up there with paints <laughs> on him. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. McKernan. Uh, I don't know. I just remember back to the the crack I had on on some of the Ireland uh, international roosters. Um, yeah, Neil McGee and, and Bomber Liston got together one night and the crack was good. So, um, yeah, <laughs> something, something like that, maybe. <laughs> Very good, lads. And Shane Hughes, uh, how could you fault Jar- Jarlett Burns' speeches today and who has done better, Mr. Kennedy? Everyone was obviously blown away by his, I suppose, passion. Yeah, here, what a man. Met him last week. I had a cup of coffee with him last week and just... No, no BS with him. You know, there's no bullshit with him. If any, you know, he's already started to raise conversations of a sensitive nature, but they need to be had for the the sort of long term future where the GA and what Ireland, what do the GA involvement is in terms of Ireland's future? He's not afraid of those issues. He's not afraid to shrink those issues. But his com- his, his bloody thing last night, his call, mm-hmm. his speech for getting it over to Connor Glass. It was passionate. It was informed. It was short. It was sweet. And it was straight to the point. I felt like running out onto the pitch after to say, right, let's play again. But no, uh, what a man to be. I know, I know it's for years gone by, it's almost like a ceremonial role. He only has a, a short stint in there, but I think he'll make great progress. You know, he was up in Belfast last week at an opening of Breda um, club rooms. He was down the day before in Cork. He will get, he'll do some medics this year. Justin McNulty make land him a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> And he remembered the players' names uh, as well yesterday, so that, 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 that was very impressive compared to Mr. I think Larry. He looked, down yeah. once. he looked down once at the ice, and he looked down something, but whenever the camera actually panned out, there was nothing there. So maybe he's just looking down at his own picture and memory of what it is. But it shows you he knows the players, he's a fan of the game. He's a, whenever it comes to hurling as well, you can bet your backside he will be as passionate about hurling as he is about the football. He will not be a football present, he'll be a GA present. And he'll still be doing bloody volunteering and box at athletic grounds come the Armagh game in the Ulster Championship. You may be the one taking your tickets going in there. Yeah, yeah. God, it's important to remember players' names when you're GA president. It's just a general thought. Lads, really enjoyed that. Thanks so many for joining me this week. And of course, this podcast is brought to you by yourgorich.com. Use the code GM podcast to get 15% off, the, off on the website. Championship back this weekend. Get yourself organised. Mr. McKernan and Mr. Kennedy, thank you very much. Cheers, man. Good night, lads.